What's up YouTube? Once again, it's time for a video card showdown. Now for you folks who follow the channel, last week we introduced the brand new Power Color 5700 XT Red Devil Edition. And this card, I have to say, is a very, very fast little beast. Now, in the last video, we showed you guys against the Founders Edition RTX 2060 Super Card, and we showed that this card actually beat that card. Um, but one of the things that we had a lot of comments about is a lot of people were saying that, hey, you know, you should get an aftermarket card and test it as well. So I did get a Galaxy RTX 2070 Super. Now, this is a card that comes overclocked out of the box, and you guys will see that the, the scores at the end of the day on this are a little bit different. But in this case, today's video, we're actually going to show you this card against this card and show you how it competes, honestly, with the RTX 2080 Super. Now, it cannot beat the 2080 Ti RTX card. That card's still the fastest card on the market. But the thing is, though, um, $699 for the 2080 Super. And like we know, this card's coming to market, you're probably gonna be able to get this card for around $429, $439 without the mouse pad. So it's a you know pretty significant price difference. Now, some things I'm gonna talk about right off before we get into the whole review is that one of the main differences between these two cards is RTX. Now, we all know that right now, RTX, even though it looks absolutely great when it's applied in games, there's just not really a whole lot of games right now, currently at the moment, that are saying, hey, wow, okay, um, RTX. Now, I will say that at the most recent GamersCon, that in Cologne, Germany, they have released a lot of information about a lot more games taking advantage of this technology. So that little thing right there is going to change a little bit. So maybe we might see, you know, an increase in games. So depending on how much you value just things that look more realistic um, is really kind of the difference right here. Because, you know, for me, if I'm playing a game and I'm walking around like, and I'm looking at stuff, you know, and it's it's a dungeon crawler, you know, like Skyrim, those type of games. I am totally cool with wanting to have a card that looks the absolute most killer because I'll walk around, use Ansel, take pictures, do all kinds of cool stuff like that. But if I'm in a first person shooter game where I'm pretty much just fighting for, for, for you know, for my digital life, um, I don't have time to sit around and look at stuff unless I want to get shot in the head. So, you know, as far as just like gameplay goes, I'm not really sure if RTX really brings that much as far as just gameplay goes. So let's just face it. How much more gameplay enjoyment are you really going to get in first person shooter games so that's that now another thing before we jump in um in the last video we did there were a lot of comments down below saying that we were doing the temperature measures wrong well we've been using um the same things that we've been measuring temperatures forever and ever and ever but since we went and we looked up some information on this we'll be showing you both of the different cooling things on the AMD. We'll be showing you the edge temperature and we'll be also showing you all what I consider, they call it the junction, but I consider it to be pretty much the die temperature. Now, I guess they're saying that, you know, all Nvidia cards only use the edge temperature. I haven't been able to do enough personal research where I can tell you straight up, you know, from my heart and head with honesty, that this is really how things need to be done. Now, I know some guys, Steve from Gamers Nexus, and I think somebody else, they've gone out and bought all these meters and these test kits and are doing all these, you know, different things. So I'll be looking into it. And, and, and as I figure out exactly, you know, how much value and if it is absolutely, you know, the best way to test will continue to change. But in this particular video, we will be showing you both of the temperatures on this card. And um, if you actually probably combine these two temperatures, things seem a little bit more even so we'll have to you know we'll have to check that out 
Real quick though, let's check out our test system. For those who follow the channel, you guys know we got a pretty cool, really nice custom open bed test bed that we've been using. We've got a really nice Asus motherboard. We've got 32 gigabytes of RAM. We've got an SSD for our boot drive, you know, a big hard drive for all of our games like everybody else. We're using the latest, greatest updates on everything that we have for Windows. We're also using the latest drivers that are available upon the time of this review. And I don't think at this time we're actually using any beta drivers. And with that said, let's rock out to the benchmark song and let the battle begin. You guys are also going to notice there's a big difference now as far as the temperatures go. This Galax card runs really, really cool. It's running at 67 Celsius. And the AMD card, you guys can see that this Red Devil, it's not really running that hot at all. It's running at 63 Celsius. All right, so check it out. 
There actually is quite a difference, I will fully admit, to changing the way that we are reading the temperatures. Now, like anybody else out there, I'm a person learning and growing, and as I get educated, we change things around. So we'll be changing in the future how we measure the temperatures of the cards. I will check out what the other guys are using with the aftermarket things and all these little meters, and we'll check out doing it that way as well. But you guys can see there is a difference now. This card's running at 67 Celsius, 63 Celsius. So there is a big difference between the way the numbers are being read. Now, one thing that is being claimed is that when these cards get hotter, they throttle much faster. And the AMD cards are supposed to be able to be running a lot hotter before they throttle. Now, like I said before, as far as just sheer gameplay goes, um, I really think that when you're just in game and you're playing a game, unless you're going to see some micro stuttering or something somewhere just happening, I think that the game experience is going to be pretty much the same. Unless you're playing, like I said, a Skyrim type game and you want to be using Ansel and taking pictures and that's what you do and that's your thing, then you're probably going to be definitely wanting to have a card that has RTX on it because RTX just makes things look more natural, more shiny. That's what it's all about. And like a lot of people just playing simply don't get that, but that's just how it is. So this card's also though, about $500. Now this particular one's not released onto the market yet, but the other cards that we're seeing are right around that price range. We know this card's going to be about $439. Um, now, in this particular video, we also showed you guys the scores against the RTX 2080. Now that RTX 2080 Super that we're using, that is the Founders Edition card. But you guys can see that this particular card is really, you know, only running, you know, probably six to 10 frames per second less than that card, which is kind of a normal thing. But that card's $700 and the aftermarket ones are probably gonna be pushing, you know, close to $800. So, um, this card being at that price is definitely a good thing. So I know there's a lot of cards out there on, on the market. I'm trying to get more of these 5700 XTs in here so I can test them. Because honestly, um, I like these cards. I do. I've been kind of saying the AMD cards have been eh, for a while, but this card actually does pretty doggone good. Now, if the other cards out there by Sapphire and XFX, if they've got some cards that are like this ballsy wallsy, I definitely want to check those cards out and see how they compete across the board. Um, we'll have links down below to some different aftermarket cards. Um, I know some of you guys love the ASUS Strix stuff. We've asked ASUS for some other cards, so hopefully um, our contact there will provide those so we can have those in here for you guys to test, but uh, I like this card. Once again, I got to say it's an editor's choice product. It really rocks. I'm hearing people saying they're all out of stock already on these. Okay, um, this particular one you have taken into consideration was a very limited edition card, but there's others out there that you'll be able to get your hands on. They just probably won't have the mouse pad. You know, I admit that's a pretty cool thing, but hey, it's 10 bucks, and honestly, you can buy another mouse pad. So that's pretty much it. This card, very, very competitive very competitive and uh what else is there really to say i mean it's really all in the numbers and if rtx isn't what you're looking for you're just a first person shooter or a dungeon guy just smashing things around that probably doesn't mean anything to you anyways